Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake helping you create something awesome today. Welcome back to the channel. So I know today's video is a little bit different. I know normally on this channel we talk about business, we talk about how to make money online, or we even talk about how to grow an audience in social media. But those are things that I actually have been able to do over a period of time by working on myself as a person. And today I wanna to talk about a struggle that I still deal with sometimes, which is the things that go with being an introvert and also why it makes me feel like it's hard to relate to people. I think one of the hardest things about being in social media and being on YouTube is that I actually don't feel like I'm a relatable person or that I have a lot of relatable situations and yet I keep putting myself out here. Now I know some of you are shaking your head about me being an introvert, but I want you to take a step back and remember that I'm here talking to you on the internet from the safety of my favorite place, my home office, where I don't actually have to interact with another human being. In fact, the majority of my day is spent having physical separation from other people, even when the world isn't melting down. I mostly am just a homebody and I'm always working on projects more than I'm probably interacting with people. As someone who's lived most of their life in their head, then I can tell you that you know, taking my thoughts and my ideas and then putting them out into the world has always been something that has been challenging for me to do. And I've never felt like I relate to other people. And my entire life, I've only really ever had like a handful of friends. Even in my adult life, I only actually had like six or seven friends throughout most of my 20s. And, you know, to this day, I have a handful of meaningful relationships. And that's because I think that when you are a creative person and you are more introverted and you really like to think about these abstract things, it's really hard for people who live very much in the present to deal with you and to kind of like see things from your perspective because for you, everything is in the future. Everything is about what is being built. Everything is about turning a thought into a thing. And so when I'm making videos here on YouTube, it's actually a little bit easier sometimes because I am overthinking everything, believe it or not. I still struggle with that. I still think about every reaction, every comment, every criticism, and I desperately have to try not to take those things to heart for my own mental health and sanity, but it's also really hard because introverted people tend to be more sensitive to those things. We're already very hypercritical. We are already very much in our own head. We are already picking ourselves apart piece by piece, every minute of every single day. And so when somebody else does it, it's just seeing like our worst fears in our mind manifest in reality to say, see, I told you so. Every bad thing you think about yourself, they can all see it. There it is, laid bare. And so that's a real challenge for a lot of people and their reaction to it sometimes is the opposite of mine. A lot of people that happens to them, it makes them a lot quieter. It makes them a lot more anxious and reserved. I get the anxious part. The reserved part for me doesn't happen. I constantly find myself in a position where I hate being misunderstood. I hate acknowledging that somehow I failed to communicate my idea in a clear and thoughtful way. And it just nags at me and eats at me. And then it forces me to explain or to correct myself or to try to analyze the gap between what I said and what was heard. And this was extremely frustrating for my parents, for my teachers, every relationship I've ever been in. All of these things are a quirk of my personality that I feel makes me wildly unrelatable. And it's the thing that makes me most insecure about myself. And so believe it or not, for a lot of my life, I just didn't put myself out there with people. I just didn't even try in many cases to make friends. I spent most of my time in my childhood just working in my sketchbooks and just reading and working on art. That's really all I cared about for the majority of my childhood. I remember that I would rush through like my homework or my quizzes just to get in another 20 or 30 minutes of drawing and making comic books. All I really did for majority of my life was work on drawing, later it was digital art, photography, painting, sculpting, woodworking, handcrafts. It's really all I lived for and it's what would get me through my days because I was constantly being either bullied or 
I was being completely ignored. If I was getting attention, it was so that I could get my butt kicked at the bus stop or so I can get picked on on the back of the bus. And if it wasn't that attention, I probably wasn't getting any at all except for at home. I was getting a lot of attention from my mom and a lot of encouragement and support for my art and my creativity. You know, my dad took a interest in my schoolwork and really made it a point that I had to uh, be perfect at that. Thanks. Um, and so that's another story that I can tell. <laughs> and other than that, you know, there was a lot in my childhood that was positive. I don't want people to get the wrong idea, but there was just a lot of things that were very difficult for me internally that really built up a lack of self-esteem in anything other than either getting good grades or making good art. Like those are really the only things that gave me any sense of value and any sense of purpose. I either had to prove to people I was smart or prove to people I was talented because I didn't feel worthwhile in any other way. And I had no experiences from my interactions with people to contradict that. And so as much as I'm an independent person with strong opinions that I frequently voice on the internet, I've always been somebody who has struggled with the idea of acceptance. I'm somebody that in my friend group, in many cases, I was the poor kid. I was the broke kid always needing to borrow money for the movies or need a ride to work. That's who I was. And that became a large part of my identity and my insecurity. And it made me, again, not really try to build connections and relationships outside of my friend group and outside of people that were in their circles. Like that's really where I had a lot of a lack of confidence. And it's something that I still deal with even to this day in different forms. I mean, you see me on stage as a public speaker and you think this person has to have a, a tremendous amount of extroverted charisma and unrelenting confidence. I built up confidence over a period of time and I built it largely from making better relationships and really exploring myself more and putting myself out there and learning that I could deal with the consequences of rejection. And that's something that's very difficult to do, but I'm also glad that it led to me making videos and content because those things changed my life. Those things gave me exposure and opportunities that allowed me to build and grow my business and build a career as a speaker and to do a lot of other ventures that I wouldn't have been able to do. I still feel that I would have been successful by retreating into my introverted qualities in some level because it did make me more thoughtful. It meant that I was like heavily into researching things that I'm passionate and care about. It meant that I could find a way to focus on my work without you know, distractions, there were a lot of benefits and I still believe that introverted people can be successful without becoming extroverted people. I at bare minimum think that I might be an ambivert or omnivert like at this point, but my default setting is still to be an introvert. I still benefit the most from solitude and quiet time, meditation, reading books, playing with my dogs, and just working on my craft is the thing that I probably get the most passion out of and the most excitement from. But I also do like talking to other people because I'm fascinated by people and their ideas and how they think. Sometimes I'm much more involved or intense in thinking about how does someone think and what, where are their ideas? And sometimes it means that I might be not as considerate of their feelings as I might like to be. And if you really look at the content, I've made over the last seven years. And if you look at the way that I actually talk in interviews, I don't talk about myself that much. I talk about things I've done. I talk about my ideas, but there's actually not a lot that many of you know about me personally. If you think about it, you probably don't even know what my favorite color is. Most of you probably don't even know the names of my dogs. Half of you probably didn't even know I have dogs, even though I constantly post about them in Twitter. And so when you really look at it, you can see those extroverted tendencies in me are very rare and that a lot of what I do comes from a place of introversion, but it also comes from a place of someone who constantly is trying to confront the things they don't love or like about themselves. 
believe me, I wish sometimes that I was much more extroverted because I do see areas where it would benefit me, especially in my interpersonal relationships. I do wish that I was more outgoing than I am. I'm somebody who's very risk adverse sometimes and a lot more conservative than I would like to be when it comes to taking risk. I take very calculated risk, like making content, publishing this video if it actually goes up instead of going into the deleted pile of for every video I release, there's probably three that I deleted that I didn't put out. Like, so I get very in my head about these things. I really wish that much like an extrovert, I didn't care nearly as much about what other people think about me, but I actually do care and I get very invested in it because I'm constantly trying to work on myself. I'm constantly trying to find ways to improve. And the thing is, I don't always agree with what other people think about me. And that's where I try not to take it personally into heart. But then again, there is that part of me that is childish and petty. And so there is that. But all joking aside, when you experience most of your childhood and even your young adulthood, being bullied like both emotionally verbally physically you know you know at school and then not relating to anybody even on the job like when i worked with people i was friendly with them but i didn't make friends with a lot of the people that i worked with over my uh career and my adult life working because it was very hard for me to relate to them and have anything in common with them and i also i don't fake those kind of things i like really can't be interested in something that I'm not interested in. And I really don't have that kind of patience. And the other thing is, I mean, and that's like hard to say, that's hard to admit. But the other thing is that I also am very direct. I, I don't like BS. I try to practice, you know, radical candor, radical honesty. And that's why I say that sometimes I don't feel I'm considerate enough of people's feelings because just saying what is on your mind isn't always a good idea. And I know that intellectually, but it's also very difficult and challenging for me because there's this point where you just feel that you're being inauthentic if you don't just cut the crap and say something sometimes. Now, in other times, you may not have thought that out enough. The good news about being an introvert is you can be honest and direct and blunt with people but you can also work on your temperament and you can figure out a way to do that to be thoughtful. And I like to believe that I get it more right than wrong, but I think my friends and family might have something to say about that. <laughs> I guess the main thing that I want to help you with is if you're someone that does relate to this for whatever reason, or you're somebody who has had similar experiences in life, I wanna tell you that you can be successful as an introvert you don't have to change who you are to improve who you are. Gaining a little bit of self-awareness and insight to your personality and to your psychology, having a close group of friends who can be honest with you and call you on your BS, being able to separate like, you know, people being mean from genuine good faith criticism is really hard, but it's a skill that you should develop. And spoiler alert, 90% of interactions on the internet are not gonna be good faith criticism. They're gonna be empty opinions with no context because they never asked you a single question about who you are or how you think. With that in mind, just really think about where your insecurities lie and don't think that you can't do something because of your personality. A lot of you will try to tell me that you don't have a personality to make YouTube videos. I hated public speaking because I was always insecure and self-conscious about public speaking because every time I went up in class, I got made fun of. Every time I raised my hand, somebody would make a comment behind my back. So I actually had no incentive to put myself out here on the internet and no incentive to be a public speaker if you think about it as an extrovert because my experience with getting attention is that it's mostly negative. And that's been true for more of my life than not. And so those things can hold you back if you let it get inside of your head. I want you to figure out how to take what's inside of your head and put it out into the world in a thoughtful way and also to figure out how you can 
you know, communicate and represent yourself well? How can you find a way to find that confidence in what you really care about? Because the only reason I can make videos is because I make videos about things that I really genuinely care about and have been thinking about and want to talk about with other people. And that's the only reason that I was able to find any of my inner confidence and any of my inner charisma because my prior life experiences undermine that just a lot. And so you may have something that you feel is undermining you, robbing you of confidence. I want you to try to let that go and try to think about where your confidence comes from. And for me, it's making things, whether it's art, writing, or making videos on the internet for whoever to watch, like that is something that has brought out the best qualities in myself not always in the comments. And um, I think that it might be something that helps you if you can just figure out what it is you're passionate about, you can find a way to express it and share it with other people. You'll find some of the acceptance that you want. You'll find yourself being more thoughtful about how you communicate. You'll be able to consider different points of view. And you actually might find some friends that you have something in common with instead of having to change yourself based on the people you get stuck in a room with. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope that helps you out. Question of the day. What is something that you're insecure about that you're actively working on or that you'd like to work on? Let me know in the comment section. Also, let me know if you like these kind of videos where I just kind of open up a little bit because I could probably stand to do that a little bit more often. It's been a minute since we've had kind of more of a heart to heart style video. So just let me know if that's something you want in the comment section or by watching and sharing more of my videos on the internet because that actually helps. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content here on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so very much for watching. And don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.